Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. And today I'm going to show you five vintage lenses, which we've got laid out here, which you can buy for around about £30. These are very cheap lenses and they're also high quality optics and you won't have to look far to find them at that price. They're all available fairly readily for around that price. They're all lenses with a maximum aperture of f2 and I reckon that's an ideal kind of aperture. It's not quite as fast as an f1.4 lens but it's very good in low light and it will give you plenty of blur. It won't give you quite as much blur as an f1.4 lens but then how much blur do we really need. Plus it will probably shoot sharper wide open than an f1.4 lens will wide open. So that's a bonus. f2 really is a sweet spot for vintage lenses. Not too slow so that it doesn't let in enough light and you can't get enough background blur but not so fast that it's introducing pretty big compromises uh, into the design and the optics and isn't going to shoot quite so sharp wide open so f2 is really ideal okay let me show you the lenses and we're going to start with this one which is put my glasses on which is the Konica Hexanon AR 50mm and this is an f2 lens with a difference because it's an f1.7 lens but I reckon that's as near as uh, as near as damn it we can count that as an f2 lens now Konica lenses have one real big quality and a great advantage over some other lenses which is that they have very very beautiful color representation these lenses are stunning for color i really don't know quite how they do it but conica lenses make colors like no others the carl zeissiena pancola is one of my favorite lenses for color reproduction but i don't think it makes colors quite as nicely as this one does and there are other lenses as well that are really good for color reproduction but i don't think any of them come quite as close as the Konica does that is none of them are quite as good as the Konica colors from this lens really are remarkable and I'm not quite sure why that should be it might be something to do with the coatings it might be to do with the glass that's used but there are no better lenses for color reproduction let me show you the lens before we go any further it's a fairly ordinary looking thing. Let's have a bit of focus, please. Thank you. It's a fairly ordinary looking lens. It's nothing particularly special to look at. Focus ring is at the front on this one and the aperture is at the back. And you can see it goes from f1.7 round to f16. So it has a wide range of aperture adjustments. The Konica AR mount is, you know, Konica lenses and cameras were not the biggest sellers of the time, but you can get adapters for these lenses to adapt them to any digital mirrorless camera you might happen to have. It's a sharp lens also. It will give you nice sharp images wide open. In fact, I was quite surprised at the sharpness of this lens. f1.7 isn't that far from f1.4 and this lens does give you a very nice, very sharp image. It gets sharper as you stop down, of course, like all lenses do, but wide open at 1.7, very sharp indeed and certainly entirely sharp enough for my purposes. Background blur is lovely from these Konica lenses. Like all vintage lenses, they can turn a little harsh here and there, but this one has no particular harsh spots that I'm aware of. The blur is pretty much uniformly 
nice and that is a big plus point for this lens it does make very nice blur it is a sharp lens and it has that wonderful color reproduction that I think is unmatched by any other lens actually uh, certainly in terms of intensity and character and that's generally something you find across the Konica range it's not just this lens my Konica 40mm uh, AR Hexanon AR is just one of my absolute all-time favorite lenses because it too has that Konica color reproduction amongst other things I like the focal length but it too has that wonderful color reproduction so I'd say the main strength of this lens as well as its general good performance the main strength and the main, uh, main unique selling point of this lens is the way it deals with colour which is pretty unique I don't know many lenses that will deal with colour in the way that this one will Konica lenses are not sought after for some reason so they are bargains at the moment this lens can be found for 30 to 40 pounds maybe cheaper with patience or if you buy it on a camera certainly if you buy it on a non-working camera you can pretty much bargain that price down a really nice little lens great general performance and particularly fine color representation very very nice indeed now you know how I said these are all f2 lenses well they're not because the next one is an f1.9 lens but I reckon that's near enough don't you this is the Chinon Auto Chinon f1.9 50 millimeter and this is a really nice lens Chinon were a manufacturer at the lower end of the market they made consumer level kit for people who didn't want to fork out cash for Nikons and Olympuses and the like back in the day and this is one of their most successful lenses most chin on lenses are pretty nice but this one is really nice I don't know if they made their own lenses I think do correct me if I'm wrong I think a lot of these lenses or most chin on lenses maybe all chin on lenses were made by outside manufacturers like Vivitar, Cosina and the like but I could be wrong this could be manufactured by Chinon but whoever made it well it's really nice and it's a really good lens surprisingly good actually I bought this lens about a year ago with a Chinon camera and I really didn't expect it to be all that much but it's actually a really great performer let's have a quick look before we go on now <clears throat> first thing you'll notice as soon as we get some focus the first thing you'll notice is the color scheme that Chinon have used and I do like the colors on this lens it's a very colorful lens and I don't know about you but I kind of think that the aesthetic appearance of lenses is uh, quite a plus point too if I can have a lens that shoots really nicely but is also a good looking lens then for me so much the better and I reckon this one's quite a good looking lens it's got a PK mount so a K mount that's a very very popular mount you can adapt that to any mirrorless camera or you can shoot it on gosh hundreds maybe thousands of film cameras that have this same K mount it's a pretty small lens if we take it back to its minimum focus distance which is sorry to infinity minimum focus distance is 45 centimeters but if we take it back to infinity you can see that really is um, a very small lens I wouldn't quite call it a pancake but maybe maybe we could give it the title of a rather thick omelet lens because that is a pretty small lens and I'm glad to see that actually that's really a bonus small light kit is a bonus Chinon haven't compromised on this lens either I'm pretty sure that's all metal there might be maybe the aperture ring is plastic possibly 
but by and large it's an all metal lens so if the exterior is metal that means that the interior parts are all good metal um, brass and everything that needs to be there is there it's in good condition these lenses last well or so they seem to do this one's in very nice order because everything turns nicely and smoothly it's got great colour. One of the things I like about this lens is its colour representation. I don't think it's quite as good as the Konica. Very few lenses are, but it's pretty good. And it's also a sharp lens. And again, perhaps surprisingly, for a cheap lens, it gives very, very nice background blur. Again, the blur is pretty much unflappable. There's very little roughness apart from just one or two points throughout the range of... Uh, camera to subject and subject to background distances but generally this will give you some really nice blur as well so good colors sharp when shot wide open certainly sharp enough for my purposes and I would suggest entirely sharp enough unless you're blowing up really big or you really want to crop parts out of your image and crop down really tight then you might start to see a little softness creeping in but great colors good sharpness nice blur and it's very very cheap these lenses you know they're not sought after they they were at the towards the lower end of the market when they were new and that's reflected in their cost these days you can find one of these for around about 20 pounds if you're patient you'll probably find one for less if you buy on auction if you go to buy it now as you can sometimes see these for very inflated prices 40 50 60 pounds but they're not worth that they don't go for that on auction on auctions they go around about 20 pounds maybe 30 pounds top end for a minter a great little lens check them out now the next lens I want to show you is also a chin-on lens. It's the chin-on auto reflex 55mm and this is from a slightly earlier generation of chin-on cameras. This lens is a really solid lens. I think it's a late 60s lens this one. It's difficult to tell. There's no, no clue on the serial numbers but this also is a surprisingly good lens. It's the chin-on auto reflex 55 millimeter f1.8 so much for f2 a eh? but i reckon f1.8 is near enough to f2 it's only 0.2 of a stop out so we'll call that okay let's have a look at this lens before we uh, go any further and there we are there's our chin on auto reflex this is an m42 mount lens a screw thread on the back there and that will screw on to your adapter and of course m42 is a very common mount that screws onto your adapter and your adapter goes onto your mirrorless camera or you just screw the lens straight onto a film camera of which there were many 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 thousands of m42 cameras made this is a rather more sober looking lens than the uh, uh, than the later one that we've just looked at and it looks very much oh we keep losing focus today that's not good it looks very much like a pentax lens of the period it's got this sort of matte black finish the focus ring is very similar it's made in a very similar style so i don't know maybe this lens was actually made by pentax i don't know they did a very very nice 55 1.8 themselves and i suspect this could be the same lens if it's not then it's certainly equivalent in optical terms to the pentax 55 1.8 which is itself a very nice lens this is equivalent in optical terms this shoots just as nicely as the pentax 1.855 and that's really saying something this is a really nice lens it's got lovely blur probably the best background blur 
of all the lenses I'm going to show you today. All the five lenses, or is it six? No, it's five. Um, yeah, so the blur is the nicest of all of the five. It's very, very soft. It's very, very smooth. And it doesn't get flapped. It doesn't lose its cool. It doesn't start to turn harsh or unpleasant at any point, just like the Pentax 55 1.8 which is another thing that makes me think maybe this is a rebodied Pentax 55, I don't know. It's sharp, wide open, certainly, again, I keep using this phrase, sharp enough for my purposes, and what I mean by that is that when I look at a shot that's been taken wide open, I'm not thinking, oh gosh, that's soft. In fact, I'm probably thinking when I look at the shot, Hmm, that's unexpectedly sharp. So sharp enough for my purposes means pretty sharp. And this lens is that. It is a pretty sharp lens when you shoot it wide open. The blur is nice and the colours are really nice from this lens as well. Not as nice as the Konica. Very few can be as nice as that. But really nice with a character all their own. They have a certain depth and resonance that you don't find in many lenses and actually I think the colours from this one are a bit nicer than those from the Pentax 55 1.8. So maybe it's not a, a rebodied Pentax, I don't know, but whatever it is, it's a very very nicely made, very very solid, very tough all metal lens that shoots really nicely and maybe the best thing about it is the cost this lens is not a high cost lens it's not even going to cost you as much as the pentax 55 1.8 which is itself a very nice lens that goes for around about 30 pounds this one because it's from a brand that's less well known and is probably considered by many not to be as good this one will cost around 20 pounds if that but do buy on auction that's where you're going to get your best prices a really nice lens very little known a bit of a sleeper but well worth getting if you find one the next lens is one of my favorite all-time lenses this is the olympus 50 millimeter f 1.8 and i've got a bit wrong on the f2s haven't i and this is another f 1.8 nigel why did you announce this video as a video about f2 lenses well i don't know i'm not very good at sums and i reckon f 1.8 is near enough don't you i certainly do this is a beautiful lens and it as i say it's one of my all-time favorite 50s Let's have a little look at it before we continue. There's our Olympus 50mm and the first thing that strikes you about it is how tiny it is. Look, <clears throat> this is pretty much a pancake lens. It's really, really small. I think it's certainly re in its retracted position. It's as small as the Practicar 50mm f2.4 pancake that we looked at last week this is a very 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 small lens in fact when i was looking for it earlier today i kept mistaking it for a 28 it really is so small again i love the markings that are on this lens i do like a good looking lens and this has green orange and white markings and it's also got this nice big metal ring at the back here this one's still got its past sticker on. The best versions of these lenses to find are the versions that say, like this one does, made in Japan, around the faceplate there. These are said to be sharper and optically nicer than earlier versions. And having tested quite a few of these lenses, shot quite a few versions of these lenses, I think that's right. I think these are the nicest versions of this lens so do look out for a made in japan one there's an earlier version as well this is a black nose version the earlier version had a silver nose uh, ring rather around the nose here and that earlier lens is 
a much lower contrast lens than the later black nose versions they're nice they are really nice they make a very nice image but if you're not keen on the lower contrast look they're perhaps best avoided these black nose versions are multi-coated whereas the silver nose were only coated on the front element as i understand it so they do make a nicer image this is a really sharp lens and i think second only to the Carl Zeiss Jena Pan Cola in sharpness wide open for a 50mm uh, f1.8 lens does it beat it i don't know i've never really done the tests uh, the pixel peeping test required to know whether this lens beats the Jena or whether it's on a par with the Jena or whether it's slightly lower in resolution than the Carl Zeiss Jena but it's in that area it's in that ballpark so it's a very sharp lens indeed it makes lovely blur the blur from this lens it's just delicious it does have a few points where it gets unsettled probably a little bit more than most of the lenses we've looked at today it does have one or two harsh points but they don't appear very often and almost all the time you've got blur that's really beautiful soft enough to fall into and go to sleep very very nice blur Colour is also fantastic from this lens. Olympus colours are always wonderful. That's why I'm, why I'm a big fan of the Olympus Suico lenses. This one's no exception. It makes colours that are pumped up and saturated. And big and bold and just how I like them. Um, if that's not to your taste, maybe consider a silver nose version. Lower contrast lens, the colours are going to be just that little bit more restrained. But you can find one of these lenses, whether silver nose or black nose, for 30 to £40. Pounds, and you don't need to pay any more than that. Um, you might pay a, pay a premium for a made in Japan version, one of the last versions that had the slightly nicer image. But don't pay too much look out for a made in japan that's a little on the cheaper side you shouldn't be paying too much for any of these vintage lenses these are worth around 30 to 40 pounds and they're a great buy at that price really in any of the versions that they come in very highly recommended lens if you're looking for a 50 f2 or around there pick up one of these you really won't go wrong Finally today we've got a lens from another lesser known manufacturer. They were one of the big manufacturers but they weren't the biggest back in the day. This is a lens from Mamiya and this is a really nice little lens. I recently bought this lens and a camera for £20 and this is the 50mm Mamiya Seco SX f2 look we've actually finally got an f2 lens in an episode about f2 lenses how good is that that's planning that's high production values and you're gonna get them on this show <laughs> okay back to the lens sx lenses have a little trick up their sleeve in that they won't mount on a standard m42 adapter let me show you so there's the lens on the adapter it looks like a normal m42 adapter but it's not look it's got a little part machined out of it here on the edge in order to accommodate this rim on the aperture ring and this little pin here i don't know if you can see that little pin that's part of the um, aperture opening mechanism for the sx cameras so these lenses don't fit on the standard adapter, but earlier Mamiya lenses are optically identical, so they will fit. So look for earlier Mamiya F2 lenses. Don't buy the SX version, but the earlier versions, yes, they're fine. And they're going to make you some 
really nice images. So early versions are optically identical to this one, slightly earlier versions of the Mamiya 50mm F2, and they will fit on your standard M42 adapter. Optically then, let's discuss these lenses, and they're just lovely. Um, again, entirely sharp enough, not really uh, any sharper than any of the lenses here today. Maybe not quite as sharp as the sharper ones like the Olympus or the Konica, perhaps just slightly softer than that. But they will make you a nice sharp image and they will make you an image that is, to use that phrase again, entirely sharp enough. Blur is very nice from these lenses. You get very nice background blur. It's well behaved in most conditions and most distances of uh, camera to subject and subject to background. This lens makes nice blur pretty much all the way. Colours are very nice too and this is a lens that puts its own stamp on colour. It does have its own identity and its own character and that's a great thing about these vintage lenses. Unlike modern lenses which tend to be a little bit samey and a little bit bland and uniform, these ones have character, these ones have individualism, these ones have individual looks that you can use for a particular aesthetic effect. The colours from this lens are pretty saturated and that's just how I like them. Um, and they do have their own look. They, uh, these lenses have a very individual look that I've not seen from any other lens. And uh, generally, all in all, they're a really nice piece of kit. They're cheap as well because Mamiya lenses, Mamiya kit... I don't know what it is about lenses from the, um, you know, sort of second tier manufacturers as Mamiya were. I don't know what it is about their lenses and their kit, but it's just not worth as much as other uh, equipment. Oh, I think that's the door. Hello, Zorky. Zorky's come to join us. Hello, Zorky. Hello, mate. Zorky's come to join us. Hello there. Zorky. Come on, Zorky. Come on. Come on, fella. Come and join us. Come on. Come on. You know you want to. Come on. Come on. Hello, mate. So, yeah, I don't know what it is about lenses from the sort of second tier manufacturers oh he's off but they just don't sell for as much and that goes for the cameras too as i said i bought this camera and lens for 20 pounds and you know it's really nice kit so if you find a mamiya lens f2 50 millimeter lens uh, a non-sx version grab it a really beautiful little optic and well worth the 20 to 30 pounds it will cost you. So there we are, five really good lenses, not quite all F2, but in the general region, and they're all readily available for a really cheap price. Hello again, Zorks. So those are my recommendations for lenses in the F1.8 F2 range they'll give you plenty of blur they've all got really nice color and they've all got enough sharpness uh, for everyday use uh, certainly for my purposes very nice optics high quality optics from around about 20 pounds and you really can't go wrong for that so i guess that's about it from me for this week. Next week we're going to have a mailbag episode. I'm going to answer your questions so please send them in. We're going to have a mailbag only episode. Do send in any question you've got, doesn't matter what it is, however left field, however standard, 
Don't feel silly if you think it's an obvious thing that you should know the answer to. Don't worry, you don't know until someone tells you. If you've got a complex question, if I can answer it, I will. So, live mailbag episode next week. Send in your questions. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that jolly old bell before you go. Thanks to subscribers, old subscribers, new. If you like the content on this channel, give us a sub. Subscribers have slowed down and I don't know why. So give us a sub if you like the content. Many, many thanks also to the patrons that we have. Patrons old, patrons new. These are the people who keep this channel running and enable the channel to do what it can do. Many, many thanks to all patrons and that is a heartfelt thank you, believe me. And if you like the content on this channel, you might consider becoming a patron yourself over at patreon.com forward slash xenography. So that's it from me for now. I will see you next time for some more xenography. <laughs>